Welcome to Make a Memory Bear. Today's tutorial features the Mamie Bear. For supplies, of course, you're going to need this pattern. The link is in the description box below so that you can head over to my Etsy shop. You can purchase this pattern. It will immediately be sent to you in an email. You can print it and begin sewing right away. So head over to Etsy for that. In addition, you're gonna need scissors, pins, a seam ripper, thread. This is optional to use the embroidery floss. You can add a mouth on the bear if you would like. I highly recommend using safety noses and safety eyes, especially if this is gonna be for a child or around children. I'm using 14 millimeter eyes, and I use a nose that's either 17 millimeters up to about 26 if you'd like a big nose like this one. This pattern is designed to be sewn on a sewing machine, but you could choose to do it by hand if you wish. This pattern calls for just under one yard of fabric total. Of course, these are memory bears, so I'm usually making them out of a loved one's clothing. I like to use at least one or two, maybe even three or more pieces of clothing to give the bear more of a patchwork type of quality. These bears are also super cute to make out of little baby receiving blankets. Sometimes if you're using baby clothes, you'll notice that the clothes are just too tiny for the pattern pieces. So what I like to do is buy a coordinating fabric, especially one that's really plushy or soft like a minky or a fleece. And I use that as a supplemental fabric. So some of my pattern pieces are cut out of the baby clothing and some are cut out of the soft fabric. Again, it gives it the patchwork quality and it's super cute. If your fabric that you're using is particularly thin or old, if it's flimsy, if it's really stretchy, I recommend buying a fusible webbing. This is an iron-on product that you can buy by the yard. You iron it onto the back of your fabric and it's a stabilizer so that your fabric is less likely to rip or tear and it's gonna hold its shape a lot better. To get started, you need to print out your pattern. When you select print, make sure that your settings say that it's gonna print at 100% or actual size. You do not want it to default to scale to fit or anything like that because then your, your pattern's gonna print out too small. On each page, there is a one inch line. You can use a ruler to measure, to make sure that that is actually one inch. That'll help you know if your pattern printed out at the correct size or not. Next, you wanna cut out all of your pattern pieces on the solid line. Next, we're going to be pinning our pattern pieces onto our fabric. And if you're a beginner, I'm going to highly recommend that you choose a fabric that has the printing on both the front side and the back side of the material so that there's no real right or wrong side that's gonna make your job a lot easier. Uh, because you're gonna notice that on many of these pattern pieces, it says something like, cut four, two, in reverse. What that means essentially is that you're going to be cutting two of these pattern pieces out in this regular direction, then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna cut two going out the opposite direction. Now again, that is only if you have material that is printed on one side only. Today we're going to be able to take a shortcut with this particular fabric because it is printed on both sides. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to layer my fabric so that I've got two layers here. I'm just essentially laying the shirt down and I'm going to cut out my foot uh, two of them that way then I'm going to cut two more out going the same way because it doesn't matter. I can flip and flop these and it's the same fabric design on both sides.
Next, we cut all the pattern pieces out of the fabric. If you're using more than one material, you're gonna to need to decide which pattern pieces you want out of which fabric. So for this bear, I'm doing the majority of my bear in this striped fabric. And then I have chosen a couple of pieces that I wanna do in my blue fabric. That's the tail, the ears, the sole of the foot, and the head center piece. And now that we've got all of our pattern pieces cut out, we're ready to sew. We're gonna begin with the head side piece. So we're sewing along seam A, and I'm gonna remove the paper template. I'm gonna make sure that my right sides and my fabric are together. This is just a straight seam that we're gonna be sewing a real quick zip. So I'm not even gonna take the time to pin it, but you absolutely could. Next is the head center piece. This is just a single piece of fabric. So go ahead and remove that paper template. We're gonna begin with our right sides together as always. And I start right at the tip of the snout, right where that nose is gonna go. And I line it up with that center seam that we just created on the head side pieces. And I'm gonna start right there at the nose part and pin that in place first so that I make sure the head center is gonna be centered. And then, um, I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna put a pin every couple of centimeters along the side. And I'm gonna make sure that as I go along that the edges are lined up nice and, and evenly and take my time pinning um, on both sides. When you finish sewing along one side, go back to the nose and start there to do your second side. We're ready to sew the head center piece into place now. This one can be just a little bit tricky because we're talking about um, doing a curve and there's a lot of material. So take it nice and slow, start at one corner and go nice and slowly. What I do as I'm going along is I'm just making sure that my fabric is nice and flat and smooth. And every once in a while, you'll notice that I kind of stop, I smooth things out, I kind of pull it, I kind of tug it, and I just wanna make sure there's no puckering and that uh, the fabric that's kind of underneath where I'm sewing is not getting bunched up or un in the way as I'm going along. If all goes well, you should have something that looks kind of like this when you're done.
Next up are the ears. We're gonna separate our fabric into two separate ears and we're gonna have our right sides of the fabric facing each other. And all we have to do is sew along the curved part of the ear. Leave that straight seam at the bottom open. That's where we're gonna place our stuffing and attach it to the head in just a moment. Next, we're gonna take a sharp pair of scissors and we're going to clip the curves, which means we're gonna be cutting these tiny little slits all around the curved part of the ear. And when you're doing this, uh, just go all around the perimeter there, but make sure that you do not cut through that seam that we just created. Don't cut through the thread. Clipping the curves allows the ear to lay flatter and more nicely when we turn it right side out. Repeat the process for the second ear. Before we attach our ears to the head, we're gonna add just a little pinch of stuffing to each of the ears to give them some volume. So just a little bit will do. And then we're going to pin them into place if you notice on the pattern, we're actually going to be attaching the ears to the head side pieces. That's where indicated. Um, and what that means is you can line that edge of the ear up with the seam where we attach the head center piece to the head side piece and pin those into place. However, I do want to say this is merely a suggestion and you can play around with this part of the pattern. I have certainly uh, made bears where I move the ears up a little bit, meaning they're higher on the head. And other times I put them right where they are for this pattern. For tutorial's sake though, we're gonna put them where they're supposed to be, which is on the head side piece. And once, it, once it's pinned in place, I give it a quick zip and sew it into place. Next up, we're gonna add the eyes and nose onto the face of the bear. I'm gonna use the pattern as a guide so that I know roughly where to place the eyes and the nose. This is just a suggestion, however, so kind of play around with it, decide where you'd like everything to go. I use a seam ripper to make a little tiny starter hole. Because I'm using safety eyes and noses, I do need to have a starting point so I can get that thick stem through. So just push it on through and then snap on the back as securely as possible so that that doesn't go anywhere. Once you have it in place, just kind of wiggle it around, smooth out the fabric, make sure it's laying flatly. Um, again, like I said, the template is just a suggestion. So you might want the eyes to be much closer to the nose. You might want them to be much farther away. So place them wherever you'd like to. I would highly recommend avoid putting the eyes or the nose directly in the seam. You want it to go through the fabric, not the seam. That is a vulnerable spot if you put it in the seam and it could pop out easily with some uh, rough housing or some wear and tear.
This next step is optional. It's adding a mouth to the bear. I use six strands of black embroidery floss. I start right up underneath the nose. I do the straight line down, and then I do the curves on either side to make the smile. We're going to sew the front of the body next. This one is very straightforward. We're just sewing along seam A, which is essentially almost a straight line. Take off your paper template and just to keep you on track to make sure you're on the right spot, make sure you've got the right sides together and we're sewing that seam that has that little square notch off to the side. So make sure that's the side you're working on and it's just a straight seam, easy cheesy. We're ready to attach our head to the body. This too is an easy step in the process. It goes like this. Take your body piece, lay it down flat on the table, and then grab the head, the front of the head, and uh, flip it so that the neck essentially is gonna be lined up. And we're gonna start with the center seam. That's the seam that goes straight down the middle of the head and straight down the middle of the body. We're gonna put a pin right there so that seam is continuous from the head all the way down the body. Pin it there first and then put a couple more pins in place off to the side to keep that neck nice and even. And then just sew straight across. The back of the head is next. Remove your paper template, put your right sides together. We're sewing along seam A. That's the seam that has that little square notch. This one too is so straightforward, I'm not even gonna take the time to pin it. To create the tail, Go ahead, put your right sides together, pin it into place. We're making these just like we did the ear so that we sew all along the curved part, but we leave that straight seam at the bottom open so that we can put a little pinch of stuffing in there before we attach it to the body. For the back of the body, we're gonna separate our back pieces into two single sheets of fabric first. Place your pattern pieces with the right sides facing up. 
so that those little triangle notches off to the side are both towards the center. With the first piece, you are going to fold over your pattern at that dart, that large triangle at the bottom, fold it in half, and put some pins in place. Then you're going to repeat the process on the other pattern piece by folding it in half towards the center, towards those little triangle notches, and pin those into place. When you're done, you should have two uh, pieces that are mirror images of each other. And now we're going to sew the dart on e each of the pieces. That's that little triangle that was at the bottom where we pinned it. That's going to make a dart so that this bear sits nicely when it's done. It's going to make his little bum. Now that we've finished the darts, we're going to sew our two back pieces together. Grab that little tail that you made earlier because this one is going to be tucked in between the layers of the back piece and sandwiched inside. So go ahead and start pinning the back pieces together. The tail is going to go inside those layers right underneath that lower triangle, that little notch. So tuck them in there and pin it into place. Those triangle notches, notches, those are there as indicators as to where you're not going to sew. This is going to create a hole in the back of the bear where we will, will eventually stuff him when the bear is done. I like to take a couple of pins, put them in a different direction so that as I'm sewing, this is going to serve as a visual reminder that I don't want to sew there. And just real quick before I sew, I make sure the tail is tucked inside. Just as we did for the front of the body, we're now going to attach the head to the body on the back. So starting at the neck, we're going to line up those edges and we're going to make sure that the seam that goes down the middle of the head and down the middle of the body are lined up. We're going to start by putting a pin there and then we're going to add some additional pins to secure it and then we'll sew straight across. we're ready to give this bear some arms. We're gonna take the arm pieces and separate them into single pieces of fabric. 
We're gonna take one arm, right sides together. We're gonna place it onto the front of the bear's body and sew it into place. There are indicators on the pattern, but essentially if you just bring it right up next to the neck where the head attaches to the body and pin it there, it lines up perfectly. Just put a couple of pins in place and then sew it into place. Repeat the exact same process for the other arm. Follow the exact same process for the back of the body. Lay the back of the body down on the table. Separate your arm pieces into single pieces of fabric. Lay them with the right sides together. Pin it into place so that the upper edge is right up next to the neck where indicated on the pattern. Pin those into place and then sew into place. legs are next. So if you'll notice on the template, it shows you that we're going to be sewing seam A, which goes along the front of the leg and also down the back of the leg. However, we will not be sewing between those triangle notches just like on the back of the bear because that's where we're going to create a stuffing hole for later. So you're going to want to separate your leg, your leg pieces into two different legs and you'll place the right sides together. You do want to pin these legs before you sew them because we don't want them to, to wiggle around. It's important that that heel right there where I'm pinning and then also the toe of the uh, foot, we want that to stay very precise because we're going to be adding a sole of the foot later. And so make sure this is lined up nice and evenly before we sew it into place. We're ready for the sole of the foot. 
This, in my opinion, is one of the trickiest parts of the entire pattern. So separate your sole of the foot into two single pieces of fabric. Grab one of your legs and we're going to open up the bottom of the foot. And we're going to pin the sole so that the right side is inside of the, the foot essentially. I put a triangle notch at the top and the bottom of the sole of the foot. You want that to line up with the seam that runs along the top and the bottom of the foot. So start by putting a pin there first. Then go to the other end, line that triangle notch up with that seam and put a pin there. And from there, you're just going to start uh, lining up the edge and placing a pin every couple of centimeters. Take your time, put as many pins in it as you need to. you will end up with this pinwheel type of effect. We are ready to sew the sole of the foot onto the foot. And I have found that it's a little bit easier if I sew it with the sole of the foot flat down on my sewing machine. I usually start at the toe of the foot. I remove the pins just one at a time and I go really slowly. I think it takes me about five minutes to do one sole of one foot. So take your time and just like we did on the snout of the bear when we added the centerpiece, I go really slowly and I'm constantly kind of pulling, adjusting, making sure that the fabric is as flat as possible as I go along and that there's no puckering or any gaps because that will make it a little bit lumpier in the end.
I'm going to clip the curves like I did with the bear's ears earlier. So I'm taking those sharp scissors and I'm putting little slits all around the sole of the foot and I'm making sure not to cut through the thread that I just sewed into place. This next step is a little bit tricky to explain. If you'll notice the seam kind of got pinched down in there, I'm going to cut that seam just a little bit right until I get to the thread. Uh, I'm going to snip that on either side right above the sole of the foot to free that up. And I do that at both the toe and at the back of the heel. See that little tiny slit that I'm making there? That's right where the seam is. And that kind of frees it up so that the sole lays more nicely. Now you can turn your foot right side out and take a look at your handiwork and make sure that it looks nice and rounded and smooth. Repeat the process for the other foot. We're ready to attach the legs to the front of the body. So I recommend laying the body out flat with the right side up. Take one of the legs, we're gonna fold it in half so that the seam that goes down the back of the leg and down the front of the leg are lined up. So we're kind of squishing it in half. Then I'm gonna flip it so that I can pin it into place. I want the toes to be right up by the head of the bear and then I'll pin it. I'm going to repeat the process for the second leg and then I'm going to sew straight across to attach the legs to the body.
Okay, we're in the home stretch. We're at the point where we're ready to attach the front of the body to the back of the body. So lay the front out flat, tuck those ears in, and then tuck the legs in. Make sure when you do this tucking part that the legs are well into the center and not anywhere near the perimeter so they don't get caught up when we uh, sew around the edges. Take the back of the body, flip it over so the right sides are together, and then we're just gonna start pinning this into place. I like to start with the center seam that goes the length of the back of the body and the front of the body. And I'll just put a pin right there so that that's one continuous seam throughout the entire bear. Then I just go around to all the major points that need to be kind of the anchors. So I'll go to these lower corners at the bottom of the bear. And then I'm gonna move over to the neck where the head and the body attach. I'll place a pin there. And you get the idea. I'm gonna go around the entire thing, putting pins all over the place so that all of the edges are aligned and ready to be sewn into place. When it comes to the head, there is not a seam that runs down the middle of the front of the head because we've got that head center piece there. So instead what I do is I take that seam down the middle of the back of the head, I put it right in the middle of that head center piece and I put a pin there first and then I will put the remaining pins around the perimeter of the head. We're ready to sew. I like to start along that bottom seam at the bottom of the bear. And take your time with this because boy, we've got a lot of layers going on now. Make sure you've got a heavy duty needle. But I like to do this all in one pass. So I just start going around the entire perimeter, removing pins as I go, uh, nice and slow and steady.
turn the bear right side out by gently pulling it through the stuffing hole in the back. I start with the legs and then I do the arms and finally the head. Next, we're going to stuff the arms. I recommend putting most of the stuffing up by the paw or the hand of the bear. And as you get closer to the body, put less stuffing in because we are going to be sewing the seam where the arm connects to the body. So you don't want it to be so puffy that you can't get your uh, sewing machine to sew through it. Once you have the hand stuffed as, as squishy or as firm as you like it, then we are going to find that seam that runs along the front and the back of the arm. And we're going to pin the arm together right along that seam. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to sew right across that seam so that it makes the arm real floppy and flexible so it can go forward and backward. If we don't take this step, then when we fill it with all that stuffing, the arms are gonna stick straight out, which is totally fine and you might like it that way. But I will be sewing along this seam to make my arms flexible so they can move back and forth. I start up at the shoulder. I line my footer of the sewing machine so that the needle sews directly on top of the existing seam. And I just go straight from the shoulder down to the armpit. and repeat on the other side. Now that the arms are done, it's time to stuff the rest of the bear. I start with the head. I particularly like to make the head firm so that it holds its shape. But this is your bear and you can make it as firm or as squishy as you desire. The final step is to sew closed your stuffing holes. I'm going to link below a tutorial on how to do a ladder stitch, but you could also use a whip stitch.
When it comes to accessorizing, one thing that I love to do is remove the collar from a dress shirt and add it onto the bear. And I do a really quick and easy method by just cutting the collar off of the bear. I stay really close to the seam and try to make it a nice, clean, finished edge because I'm not gonna do anything fancy with this collar. All I'm gonna do is cut it off and add it onto my bear. I'm going to put the collar on the bear, button it into place, and then I'm going to pull it taut so that in the back I can put some markers as to where I need to cut off the excess. And I'm going to do this just by putting a pin or two um, in place to serve as a, a rough indicator of how much excess I need to remove. Remove the collar from the bear and cut everything that's between the two pins. And now we're gonna sew the collar back together to make it the smaller size. So we're gonna line up those uh, two raw edges, pin them, and then sew them together. And now we've got a shortened collar that should fit your bear just right. So once you fold it over and smooth it over and you button it onto the bear, you can't even tell that we made any modifications to it or that it came off of an old dress shirt. And it's a perfect way to accessorize your bear and finish him off. Have fun accessorizing your bear and making it your own. Here's a bear that I made using all plush fur, just added a little bow to her head. As you see, we already made the little guy with uh, the collar. You could add on a little heart or any appliques. You could add flowers, big bows, anything that you'd like to make these bears customized and your own. <music> 